more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Yo, fly eagles fly. It's cowgirls week. Philadelphia doing the one two thing best record in the NFL and you know how it goes down cannot wait for this weekend coming up with the Cowgirls but we have to review this Commanders game here at least at the beginning of the week so make sure you check out the after game review if you haven't already done so make sure you're subscribed if you're not subscribed and definitely make sure you're sharing this content on social media message boards and stuff like that right don't let your boy down man don't sit on your hands make sure you're sharing the content because sharing is caring <laughs> all right so you know i have to talk about safety play safety linebacker play that's my specialty those are the, the positions i play after being switched from running back so i love the philadelphia eagles first and foremost but i love the philadelphia eagles this version because Sean Desai is in town and your man is a stickler for safety play, right? I'm talking about oscillating between conventional nickel and big nickel. So something like this, right? For the lay fan who wants to learn, right? So Eagles 3-4 based alignment, right? You're going to be working with those three down linemen, two, two outside linebackers if you're just talking about the line of scrimmage. So to get to your sub package, right? Meaning you sub in lighter personnel, you will remove a lineman. So you see right here, only two down linemen. You get your two edge players, your two outside linebackers, Sweat and Raddick here. Normally they would bring in Eli Ricks for your conventional nickel against 11 personnel, one back, one tight end, which will leave three receivers. So you have him guarding on the inside receiver, him being Eli Ricks. Big nickel, you bring in Sidney Brown. You have three safeties in the game. Your first Line of defense from the back end moving forward, of course, Reed Blankenship and Kevin Byer. Having those guys with the split safety looks allows for you to not give up the big play. And it allows for you to play at least slay right a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. James Bradbury should always be like this. I done said it before. He's an off-man guy who needs to shuffle, shuffle back to the sideline play that type of deal him up close against fast receivers like Terry McLaurin is a no go. He can't run. Right, so if he can't run and you try not to give up the big play, uh, it's an exercise in futility there. But hunt him down Brown right here. My man, Sidney Brown, right? The bounty hunter. You trying to run a drag route on him when he's sinking up in mid in mid zone duty right here? Yeah, congratulations, bro. You trying to get people killed, bro. Sam Howard right here on the pool. You can take the snapshot right here. He had to go for the path of least resistance, which will be underneath right here. Sidney Brown sitting in shallow zone and Oh my God, he launched that dude, right? You see the man fly in the air like this? Look at this, head on the outside. My man just turning around, just in the nick of time to get bang, right to his small intestine. Look, damn near flew about 10 yards too. Man got himself a reverse first down, flying 10 yards there. Listen, when your small intestines start whistling, you know you got a colon blow right there. Somebody gonna have to check Terry McLaurin's drawers right there, right? They gonna have to steam clean them shits. <laughs> they want to boil his drawers to get the shit up out of it. Hunt them down brown, laying people out. And look at this shit from this angle right here. This is gruesome, right? This is like Sheldon Brown on Reggie Bush back in the day. Half you cats probably don't even remember that shit, but look at this. Head on the outside. Look at the moment of impact right here. If you're not expecting that, congrats to McLaurin, though, for holding on to the ball. He's a savage in his own right. But look at this right in his colon. Bang. The Ducalax hit of the week. <laughs> and then he had to stand up over him. Terry McLaurin don't even know what's going on, right? He's out of it. He was put in hospice while he was in the air, right? They already signed him up for hospice while he was in the air. <laughs> he came back down and they had to take him off the hospice list because he woke back up. But his eyes was rolling in the back of his head and shit like that. They having to unroll his eyes out the back of his head. He can't even focus on Sidney Brown. He's trying to look at shit. Come on, man. Sidney Brown, baby. Now, that's that shit right there, boy. That's that Philadelphia Eagles football, man. Shout out to Sheldon Brown, too. I don't know if you guys noticed this right here. This is unconventional. Sean Desai in his bag again, right? Think about this. Your man right here is essentially an inside linebacker in this because this is your normal base set. Three down linemen, get two edge outside linebackers. You see Reddick here, Sweat here, your three down linemen. And Sidney Brown is in the game opposed to having Zach Cunningham. I can't, uh, hopefully, right? Zach Cunningham or Morrow right here.
right here next to N'Kobe Dean. So you get a little bit more speed on the field, right? However, when you do this, right, and you have this nickel sin here, right, uh, that puts the onus on your line, on your third level players like Kevin Byard here to have to guard someone like Curtis Samuel in the slot, which Kevin Byard is definitely capable of, right? Not too many people can corral those guys in the slot, though. You can see right here on this nickel sin, look at that. You see him creeping on the come up? Yaka. Oh, nasty. Absolutely shot the C gap right here. Yeah, absolutely shot the C gap as it widens up right there. Saw that coming front side. Your boy Brian Robinson right here trying to reverse course and catch another crease. But look at that. Gets himself a tackle for loss. That's some high-level football intelligence right there for the most part. Obviously, it was a call because you can see Kevin Byers start to creep down into the into the now nickel position right on a replace there. But Sidney Brown shooting that gap. Having him in the game, using that speed like that to shoot the gap, something is very unexpected, right? Unexpected for the offense right there. So all of it's almost like a defensive tendency breaker there. A base conventional set on the line of scrimmage, but with a sub-packaged look behind it. Who's doing that, man? Come on, man. Love me some Sean Desai. Now look at the communication on the back end, right? They're back into that big nickel set right here. You can see... Reed Blankenship and Bayer calling it out, right? If you get, when you get that motion man right here, right, he's widening out there. He's widening out. So these guys are going to have to shift their responsibilities and make sure that nobody's going to get to the outside of there while still maintaining that third level responsibility. However, they do that just to come back with the reverse. So someone like Sidney Brown has to make sure he stays on his keys as well. But this play is really made by Derek Barnett as well. You can see him having that outside register here, which allows Sidney Brown to work outside in here to make the tackle here on Deami Brown, right? Check this out. Get that motion, you see him shift over. Now look at it, right? Cunningham fooled, right? Pretty much everybody fooled right here on this side of the line of scrimmage. But you get that great football IQ from this side of the line of scrimmage as well. Obviously, these guys not necessarily fooled. You still have to maintain your register as well from that motion there but you can see right here why Sidney Brown eyeing it outside in outside in cuts back hell of a play and Jalen Carter was there too and I think this is the play he got hurt on right there I'm not sure exactly what happened how he got hurt on that play but once again you can see him coming from linebacker death parallel to the line of scrimmage that's how you maintain that gap approach right here you got people working outside and if De'Ami Brown wants to shoot it right here, he's going to run into, I would have to imagine that's Fletcher Cox. But you can see right here, nope, that's actually Jalen Carter himself. So Jalen Carter coming through right there from his five technique or three techniques position. And then Sidney Brown with that outside in. Come on. That and your young safety, having those guys blanket ship Brown, right? Eli Ritz coming again. These are some young players, Jalen Carter, Young players mixed in with those veterans, that gets you that football IQ earlier on in your career. Sky's the limit for these guys as a group, man, in the future. All right, I'll be doing y'all a disservice not talking about this particular play right here. You get one of these scene post fades. So you get a fade on the outside right here, JB on that. You get the tight end, Logan Thomas here. He's running a post. You get that outside widened seam here by Jahan Dawson, my boy from my Penn State Nittany Lions right here doing his one-two thing. Now, they're in combination coverage. I want you to notice that. You get Reed Blankenship right here. They're going to roll coverage behind him. So, Bayard's supposed to be posted in the middle of the field. He's going to get anything smoking behind him. Reed Blankenship is essentially trying to rob the middle of the field. You get Sidney Brown right here. Hunt him down Brown. Right? He's essentially in man coverage. Right, it's, it's zone, obviously he's starting off in the zone, but it converts to man when somebody comes in his area. So we see him working against Jahan Dawson right here. Now, the people are gonna give you the benefit of the doubt when they like you, but look at this. What happens, what do you see right here on this? You see him in man coverage looking back on the quarterback. He transitions with this route right here, but he takes a full transition, you know why? Because if you're in man coverage, you abort looking at the quarterback and pay attention to the man. So look at him, right? He takes that outside approach, the outside register here. It turns back inside. Because remember, he's pretending like he's going to fade this. 
And then he has that agility to cut on a dime right there. Now, Sidney Brown starts looking at the quarterback. He's wondering if that's him. You can see Dotson right there. He already knows. So if he were to transition, not be worried about him, and he shoots his transition this way, maybe he's – Maybe he's in better position at the very least, but he's in poor position right here, especially when Kevin Byard starts to roll down here on Logan Thomas on that post route. So you see right here, he's beat by a mile, an absolute mile. People tried to tell me before that they think that he could be a nickel corner in this league. And I'm like, you have to be absolutely kidding me. They point to him playing a little nickel at his time in Illinois. And I'm like, that's not his skill set, bro. He's like, you guys said, like a Troy Palomalu or like Talanoa, Talanoa Hufunga out in San Francisco. Those type of players right there. You want to let them roam the line of scrimmage and make plays, shallow zone duty. But the more he has to go backwards, especially in man coverage, I think you'll see him exposed a little bit more, right? Uh, you can put that on a number of people there, right? You can say Kevin Byard or whatever like that. But even having help over the top doesn't mean you don't do your job there. So if it's Reed Blankenship, people are going to come and start talking shit. Like this one cat was in the comment section completely destroying Reed Blankenship because he didn't like him to begin with. All right, similar deal right here. Sometimes they should really roll to those big dime situations to where at the very least you'll have Eli Ricks in the game and you can try to parlay that, right? So uh, having him here against Terry McLaurin here is a scary proposition. You get that inside fade, and uh, yeah, <laughs> on that inside fade right here, man, look at this. He bogged it down, accelerated on him right there, and it was just happened to be a bad throw. He was absolutely lucky on that one because if you see it right here, a good throw, he's beat. But look, he got at least a step on him right here, and – he has to kind of lay out for the ball. The pass is just a little bit more shallow. He's he's catching that bad boy like Shane Victorino over the shoulder. So, I don't know what to tell you right there. Definitely not his game. Definitely not. Ooh, pause. Got to pause that right there. Listen, definitely not something you want to see him in all the time. Maybe in spurts, right? He can definitely get better at that particular portion of the game. But like I said before, the more he's working in reverse, the least impactful or the less impactful he'll be when he's moving forward, working that shallow zone duty, lighting people to fuck up, sending them to the upper room with Jesus. Oh my God, what a player. What a fit with Blankenship and Kevin Byatt back there alongside Eli Riggs, Slay, and Bradbury. Uh, that secondary has a chance to be extremely nasty. Didn't show it Yesterday, though, against the Commanders, they all got lit up. I don't want to hear anybody in here trying to point out one particular player. I was going back through these clips, Slade getting beat. Um, luckily, you know what I'm saying, the shit bouncing off fingertips against Slay. Uh, Bradbury, of course, getting beat. Blankenship, Kevin Byard getting beat. And, of course, Sidney Brown right here. So, they got to shore that up right there. But I told people before, that is a tough team to play against. They have so many weapons and, and they're very aggressive with those weapons there. And those having those guys out of the backfield that you have to keep tabs on as well uh, makes them one of the best, in my opinion, top five offensive personnel teams out there. All right. Well, it's your boy, Jersey Murphy. It's always another one, man. Cowgirls week. But we'll get back into some more on this one right here and really dive into what was going on. Uh, because the, 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 the Cowgirls, right, they definitely have some some weapons as well. Okay, up front, right? They have a, a definitely a chance to try to replicate what the Commanders did here. And they play a lot better defense than the Commanders. So it should be a good game. I can't wait for it, man, for sure. So keep it locked right here as always, man. South Jersey stand up. Uh, shout outs to the entire Philadelphia, South Philly, Southwest Philly um, on deck. Uh, shout outs to Elton, Maryland, and Delaware, Wilmington, Christiana, Newark, Newcastle, everybody out there, man. Bridgeton, Millville, Violent, as always, stand up. <clears throat> what more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.